Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use hot iron transfers in order to create cute embroidered designs like this one here. By adding this cute detail, you can personalize kitchen towels, pot holders, aprons, bags, and even embellished garments. If you like the Aunt Martha's Dog Day cowboy design I'm using in my example, we'll post the link in the description so you can order your own. Now let's go ahead and get started. First, let's go over the hot iron transfers. You can see an example right here. Now, it usually comes on a sheet inside of an envelope with different patterns and designs, and then you cut away the one that you actually want to use. You can see this one is already partially cut out. Now, you do have to be careful. It is printed with a special ink that will transfer to your fabric, so then you can use it to embroider and create the design. But we can also see we have our main design, we have this little example drawing right here, and then we have some words. If I just left it like this and then ironed it onto my fabric, I could be taking the chance that all of this is going to be printed on my fabric, including this and this right here. And we don't want that, maybe we just want this design, or we just want this dog here and we don't want this swirly part at the bottom. So you need to make sure that you cut around only getting the design that you actually want to transfer. Now you do need to make sure that you leave somewhat of a border. I would not cut really close to the outline of your design. Leave as much paper as you can because we're going to be pinning it to our fabric and you want to make sure that you have enough room to actually put those straight pins and they don't get in the way of the design itself. When it comes to fabric choice, you're going to want to use a fabric that can take a really high heat, like cotton. Now this is actually a kitchen towel which I purchased in the same section as where my store has all its embroidery items. So this is like an embroidery accessory. So from there you can get kitchen towels, aprons, stuff that you can normally see embroidery on. You obviously can also use your own fabric, but you do need to pre-wash and pre-treat that fabric before you do any sort of embroidery. So if it's treated with any sort of chemical, that's going to come off and make the transfer easier. Sometimes your hot iron transfer will come with a little test design so you can test it out and make sure you have the right heat setting and everything. If you do have one of these and you want to practice a little bit, don't practice on your actual item that you're going to be doing your actual transfer on because there's no guarantee that once we iron this on that this design is actually going to come off. So if you want to test it, get a similar type fabric and use a scrap of that to test your design on. When placing your transfer, your fabric should be right side up and the transfer should be right side down. So it's right side to right side. That way we make sure that the ink goes directly to the fabric. And everything that's printed on your design, of course, is going to be reversed once we iron it on. For attaching your design to your fabric, you have a couple of different options. You can do straight pins like I have. I just do a couple of them. Or get some needle and thread and you could do a hand basting stitch all the way around the perimeter. With the hand basting, it makes it a little bit easier to iron it because you don't have your pins in the way. But I actually prefer to do the pins because as I'm ironing it, I can lift up a couple of pins, lift up my page, and make sure that the transfer is actually going through and it's as dark as I want it to be. So I just find that a little bit easier. Now you do need to make sure that it's exactly where you want it and that it's straight because if you lift it up and you're like, oops, it's kind of crooked, there's really not a guarantee on getting the design off and then restarting it over. So you do have to be careful and make sure you get it perfect the first time. Have your iron heat up to a very hot setting. I like to put it on the cotton setting. And if it does have the steam function, go ahead and turn that off. We don't want to add any steam or moisture while doing this. You want to dry iron. You're going to take your iron, place it over your design, and just slowly move it. If you do have pins that tend to get in the way, you can go ahead and remove a couple of pins, but keep some of them in place because you don't want your design to then shift as you're doing it. And you can always just check your progress by lifting it up and looking. My iron's not on, so you're not gonna be able to see anything. So if it looks very faint, it probably just means that you need to apply more heat in order to darken your lines. You can always go ahead and do it over again. 
If you have a few areas that came off pretty light after you remove the transfer, I wouldn't put it back on and try to iron it again. Instead, just use a fabric marker or fabric chalk and you can just draw it in. And so then you're able to see the line clearly. Also, don't throw this away because you can always reuse transfers again. I definitely recommend using an embroidery hoop in order to stitch your design because it keeps the fabric nice and tight and just makes it a lot easier. Also, I use an embroidery needle so it has a larger eye to hold your thread. Now this is embroidery floss that you can find at your local craft store and sometimes the patterns that the transfer comes in will give you suggestions on what color you should use or you just use whatever you want, which is what I do. I pick whatever color I want. Now, if you look at your embroidery floss, you wanna cut, uh, I'd probably say a couple of feet of embroidery floss. Just don't make it too long or else it could get tangled very easily. But if you look at it very carefully, it's made up of six individual strands. You can see I'm pulling them apart. And I usually like to use three of these strands per stitches that I'm doing. So I just pull one out at a time until I have three of them. And then I put it on my needle with the three strands and then tie a knot at one end. As a quick bonus, I'll show you some of the common stitches that I'll do for embroidery. So the first one is going to be for lines, usually outlines. I'm either going to use a back stitch or I'll use a stem stitch. So I'm just gonna show you how to do a stem stitch. So I'm gonna start here. I'm not gonna start completely on the end of my line, but just a little bit in front of it. Pull that through. And then I'm gonna to go to the end. Now, when I bring my needle back up, I'm gonna come up right in the middle of that. And you'll notice that my threads are to the left. And every time I start a new stitch, I'll make sure that my threads are always on the same side. It doesn't mean they always have to be on the left, but you always pick a side and then stick with it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go a little bit in front of that first stitch. You can see my threads are to the left. And when I come up this time, instead of coming up in the middle, I'm going to go to where that first stitch is. So here's my first stitch and I'm coming up right next to it and I'm going to pull it through. So then I'm going to go down, threads are to the left, and then I'm going to come up to where that second stitch is. See I'm coming up right to the end of that. And then I'll just keep doing this until my outline is complete. Now when you're done with an outline and you wanna end it, all you need to do is just go straight down. So I'll show you how to do that. We'll pretend like we're at the end of my stitch here. So let's say this is the end of my section. You're just gonna do a small stitch in front of your last one and then just go straight down and there you go. For small little dots, such as you see here and also in his little bandana here, I like to do the French knot. So we're starting off the same way. I'm gonna come up right in the middle of this section where I wanna do the French knot, pull it all the way through. With my left hand, I'm gonna hold the thread to the left and I'm gonna bring my needle in to the right and I have the pointy part of the needle going towards my thread. I'm gonna wrap this around my needle three times, hold it with my index finger, and then go down right next to where my first stitch, you don't wanna go back in the same hole, but right next to it. And you're gonna hold it pretty tight with your left hand. If it's too loose, you'll get a sloppy looking knot. So I'm going to put my needle down. I'm still holding with my left hand, pull it all the way through. And once it gets close to the end, I let go with my left and there you have a French knot. If you have little short lines, such as you can see the dog for here, I just do a regular single stitch. You don't have to do anything fancy. So I'm gonna come up on one side and then go down on the other side and then I'll do the next line. So this one's actually really simple and it's better just to keep it basic than to try to do something fancy like a stem stitch or something like that. And if you're doing just little short lines and you want them to be a little bit on the thinner side, then just use less embroidery floss. You don't have to use the three strands like I do. You can do it a little bit less. So there's two, and I'll just do this little one right here. So go up, 
and then go straight down. Other stitches you might want to use will be filling in areas, such as in the nose or in the eyes here in my example. You can use a satin stitch for that. We do have a tutorial on how to do a satin stitch. Another one not shown here, which you might come across, is going to just be a regular cross stitch, and we also have a tutorial on that. When you finish with your embroidery, you can end up with a cute, personalized item like this one. So we hope you enjoy making your own. New tutorials are released weekly, so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 200 sewing video tutorials, including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at ProfessorPincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. Thanks for watching.